you got to hear a noise. I apologize that someone <laughs> doing the doing the front yard. But anyways, really enjoyed Cobweb. And for you as a filmmaker, what did Woody bring as the lead? What did you see in him as an actor? And why did you know that he could pull such a big role off? Uh, you know what is so surprising with him? And uh, he was only nine at the time of the shooting. It was, it is because I can't wait to see what he will do now, but it was that he succeeded to be totally at the present in those scenes. And you know, it's not, a, it's not a difficult place to go, you know, when you play these very uh, high emotions of uh, scare on everything, you know, a horror movie on set, it's not scary at all. It's technician, you know, pulling strings on this kind of thing. And you have that kid in the middle of that set and suddenly, he plays the present, he plays as he is, and, uh, and he loved that. So it was, it, it was so cool to have him with me, and I really anchor my story to him, and I really follow him in all that story. And I wanted that the story to be told through his eyes, you know, so my cameras were always at the same level of his eyes, just behind him, so he really gives the lead, and I follow him. But he was so in the present, and so professional, and he was nine. I was lucky to have him with, uh, with me on that. You know, was one of the inspirations for you to direct this film, the fact that one of the themes is uh, the, the power of a, a child's imagination and children really, sometimes adults talk down to children about their imagination. And sometimes in reality, children should follow that in intuition about following their imagination. I think that's sort of a little bit of a layer to your film. Can you just talk about that aspect? Uh, yeah, I, I will try to be as clear as I can. Sorry for, the, for my English, but... Uh, no, it's great. <laughs> it's a great question because in Cobweb, there is a... I don't know. When I was a kid, you know, I loved stories. So I, I was always, you know, my eyes on, on the moon, I would say in France. And... Uh, and I said, oh, oh, go down and play with your brothers or this kind of thing. I was always like that, you know, imagining stuff and things like that. When I read that script, I, I, I never, and because I'm not, uh, I don't know, realistic, but I never take imagination for a problem in, in the other way. I think it's a straight, you know, and, and especially in Cobweb, imagination is, uh, is the key that that has the thing that uh, f uh, Peter has to follow that. Even if his parents say it's your imagination, he has to follow that. And and on that process, and, and yes and no. If you see the movie, you will see. But uh, and, <laughs> and and I love that process. It's like a, an onion, you know, the layers that your imagination tells you something. You you know you remove a, a part of it, a part of it, and you discover something else and something else. And suddenly, all you, all what you trust is not what you think, and all is an illusion. So it's all that thing that's dancing together that I loved a lot on, on Cobweb. And um, I wanted to go on that, you know, in a real hypnotic way. You know, there is very slow motion always onward, all this kind of movement. And so it's hypnotic. Uh, drum and lace uh, score is the same way. So we, we have to create that weird place where imagination and reality are not clear. And because the movie is not grounded, you know, it's like a fairy tale a little bit. You really are in an imagination world. So you have to, you know, take position, follow Peter, who have another ID. And my ID was the audience has to never be ahead of him. So as to follow the imagination of Peter. But I love that... Um, confrontation between reality and family and everything and what you can imagine and what you need to imagine. It's maybe why I love cinema so much. You know? <laughs> Samuel, a couple of final questions is first off, I always, you mentioned cinema. I always mention, I always think of directors like um, one of my favorite directors is uh, Truffaut and I love Brian De Palma, people like Hitchcock and they were, they're real Scorsese, they're real cinema directors, but I, you mentioned curse. And I always think about these filmmakers, maybe, their curse is they're so obsessed with their story that maybe they're in the editing room so much longer than the average person. And I feel that you're that type of person. Do you feel so obsessed? Because this feels like you could stay in the editing room and continue to work and rework like the onion. Is that a curse for you or is that a blessing? <laughs> so. 
<laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It's the way you have to take, you know. You don't. Uh, for me, I don't feel I have the choice. I think the the boundaries of that is the production way. You know, at, at this time we have to finish the editing process. But I really think that um, you know you have um, three writing process in a movie. You have the, when you write the script, when you shoot it. And when you edit it, you can, you know, bring another, uh, uh, all of the writing process to your movie. So the edit process is so important. And in a scary movie, it's so important to explore and find a good way. And, uh, you know, when you watch Brian De Palma movies, it's so uh, virtuous in a way. You can't help yourself to say, oh, my God, what? It, it, it must be. And the whole technique of editing, you know, uh, it's not the same way to do. We can do everything today and try everything. At the time, try something was long, you know, so they really try something and say, oh, no, it's not a good way. Oh, no, it's a, but whatever. It's like imagination. Making a movie is a curse, you know, but we love that. <laughs> but uh, at this point, in the editing process, it can be difficult. You, you make a uh, wrong, wrong path. You are wrong and you have to admit you're wrong. You have to test things. And, um, I, I have that, I, as you said, I have that, I can stay in that room all my life. So I really need the help. I, I, I am not afraid, you know, to show what I am to, to the people I trust, to the producers. And in that project, the producers were so great with that process. And I don't get we're so great with that process. We really, you know, find our way. But if the time was not finished, maybe I, well, I, I will be, I would be on that room even now, you know, to try some stuff. But we have other story to tell. And Samuel, before you leave very quickly, can you, right off the top of your head, can you name one of your all-time favorite movies? And what is it about this specific film that resonates with you, that, that is special for you? And Okay, I can tell only one. The Shining is one of them. And, uh, what I love in that movie, except that it, it, scare, it scares me even today, is that... Uh, in the, the same time, I was so scared by that horrible cinematographic power. I have a smile on my face during a lot of passage. And I think uh, Shining has maybe the best dialogue scene ever, you know, at this bar. And you have a movie where you can be scary and it can be strange enough. And then you can laugh and be scary and, and then totally offended by the movie in the same time. And for me, it's a cinematographic experience that I will never forget. That movie stays with me every day. Samuel, really love Cobweb. I'm going to really recommend this film. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate you. you.